Hi everyone, I'm gonna show you today how I set up all my envelopes for printing at home or through my printers. I'm using Adobe InDesign and I'm gonna use a data merge tutorial. This is going to be a quick kind of do it with me tutorial, whereas we have a longer one that I'll link in the corner for you that goes over all of how this works, issues you might face, and all the little in intricacies of it. So check that out if you want to delve deeper into this, but this is gonna show you how I actually do it for a client. And if you want courses like this, tutorials and motivational emails just for stationers delivered to your inbox every week, make sure you check out Stationery School, which is linked in the comments, and you can join our free Stationery Squad on Facebook, which is an awesome community to uplift stationers and the stationery industry as a whole. So to set up, I've got my file over here. This is just Google Sheets. They sent it to me. It all looks really good, so I'm just gonna download it as a CSV file. Great, awesome. I've set up my file in InDesign. This is going to be just the front of the envelope because I'm gonna print the return addresses separately with my printer. That's just how it works with them. You could do it either way. So I've set it up to the size of the envelope. It's seven and a half by five and a half. So it's the main size of the envelope plus 0.25 inches for a bleed. And I've got a text box that I've drawn here. Nothing crazy, I've just got one page so far. And I'm going to go back to the file in Illustrator that I designed. This is the mock-up for them. And then I'm going to notice a couple of things about this. So where it's placed. So I'm going to draw a box. This is how I do this. You can do it with the ruler tool is a little bit easier, but it's about two and a half inches down from the top of the envelope. So I can go ahead and make sure that in InDesign, I'm about two and a half inches down. Because of the bleeds, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, so this is a pretty good placement. As long as it's approximately what you showed them on the mock-up, you are good to go. Then I'm gonna note what fonts I'm using. I know these by heart, um, as well as the size. And I'm going to write down the CMYK values on a scrap piece of paper, um, or you could copy the hex code, whatever you wanna do for uh, transferring over the exact color to make sure you get it right. So I'm gonna make sure this is, let's see, 32 point font. Um, I actually have done this exact same layout before. This is a change the date and we use the same envelope layout. So I'm gonna actually go a little bit smaller and probably go with uh, 29 because I remember there being a lot of really long addresses and it's better to start out um, with the size that's gonna work for the most of your addresses. You can see a lot of these intricacies in the longer tutorial. I'll pay attention to the size of this font, 14, and the tracking, which is 50. The tracking of my zip code is 1500, and everything is left justified. So that's a good starting point for us. We'll head back over, and we can click on Data Merge to get our Data Merge panel open, potentially, maybe. <laughs> we'll go up here and use Select Data Source to just select that. CSV file that we just used. All of the columns are gonna populate here. Again, a better explanation of this in the longer tutorial. We'll populate everything, and I had already changed this to that same font that we were using. Um, you'll see over on this layout that we're doing city, space, dash, space, state. So we'll make sure we do that. State and our zip code as well, which we can't even see because everything is too big. So we're gonna put everything, I'll just go ahead and put it all into our smaller font. We want this to be size 14 and we want tracking to be 50, except for the zip code, we want to be 1500. And then we had the state in italics. So we'll put that in italics. And then I'll change the names to Kathy Beatty. Um, this was, I think we were 29 as the font. Um, the line height is gonna be 18, it's a little bit bigger. And then on this front one, it's top one, I mean, it's 28. And then we want everything to make sure it's the same color. So you just click on one of these swatches and change it, and these are those same values. I went ahead and did that for you to make this just a little bit faster. So this is what it looks like. You can do a little preview to see how we're doing. And like I said, there's lots of long addresses in this list, so I'm glad we went a little bit smaller just to make that a little bit easier on us, um, and because I know that the client is okay with that. 
So then I will click here, create merge document. And there's a few things, but the main one is remove blank lines for empty fields. So if we don't have a second line for the address, you wanna make sure there's not a blank line there and that it all um, justifies up to not look weird. And then no overset text was generated. That doesn't mean that nothing went onto a separate line. It just means that nothing went out of the text box completely. That's mostly just because these are so small. So we still have a lot of work to do. What I'm noticing here is when we went back to the script font, we forgot to change the tracking. So we have 102 documents laid out. How annoying would it be to change the tracking 102 times? What we can do though is just go back Highlight what we need to fix, change it to zero, and make the merge document again. Wahoo! And then we fixed it on all 102 of those. So make sure, go through a few, make sure everything you've done, the color, the size, the placement, all of those things make sense before you start going back and editing because you're gonna find all these issues. And after you've made a bunch of edits, you can't go back and just like redo the whole data merge. So do that at the beginning. Um, make sure everything is where you need it to be. This is also why I don't use the data merge to add the return address. I always add that through the end. If I'm going to, I set up the file for the full open flat envelope and then I add the return address via a master page tutorial linked in the corner on how to do that as well. So then what I'm gonna have to do is go through every single page and update it. Um, for these, what we had decided to do was if there's two names um, that are different, then we're going to just go ahead and add a space there and put them on separate lines. There's a lot of those for this client. So this is going to take me probably about 20 minutes just to make sure we get everything. Um, don't like knock off any letters. Don't accidentally delete anything. Sometimes fonts have some interesting characteristics that look weird. This one is a pretty good one, um, but occasionally like this H is really, really close to that M. So I might just add a space there because it looks more aesthetically pleasing. So you kind of just go through and make sure everything looks good and make any of those changes. If um, this one almost fits on one line, then I might just make the font a little bit smaller until it all fits on one line and especially if they're married we try to do that at all costs if we can we can't really tell if they have different last names if they're married or not but we just do the best that we can this one is so long that it definitely needs to be on its own line and you can see how these kind of interact with the line above it which we don't really love so we're going to um, increase this or decrease it either way um, just until it looks a little bit more pleasing and the s in this font is something that um, doesn't really have a lot of left side bearing that's the official name for it so i'm gonna just add a little space if we have anything that starts with a capital s so i'm gonna go through fix all these little weird things it's probably gonna take me about 20 30 minutes and then i am good to go with 102 addresses in not so much time um, it would have taken way more time to do this manually so check out our longer tutorial on this i'll link it for you in the corner as well it's our most watched video and i promise this will change your life if you're not familiar with this tool i hope you enjoyed this little intro to it and let me know what questions you have on data merging in the comments on either of these videos. I'd be happy to answer those. If you want to join our free community for stationary designers, it is linked below. It's called Stationary Squad. And you can also enroll in Stationary School where you get tutorials, motivational emails, and mini courses delivered straight to your inbox every single month. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.